but okay. I mean, should we, should we start off? We can, uh, do a little intro. Yeah, bro. Let's go. Um, okay. So the first ever women in, um, whatever we want to call it, crypto, blockchain, all of the above web three, we're <laughs> just, uh, tackling everything. The first ever edition with Hannah Forbes, Dr. Hannah Forbes of Zest hey. and me of uh, Megan, Security Token Market. So Hannah, um, I would love for you to kick us off and introduce yourself. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, super excited to be doing this. The first of many, uh, the first and pro- hopefully the worst. It'll get better from here. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm Hannah. I am the community lead at Zest, which means that I'm helping Zest uh, build their community online and in real life when it's safe to do so um, and getting lots of people excited about what we're doing at Zest. Um, and what we are doing at Zest is... Um, essentially creating a bridge between Web3 and the real world. And the way we're doing that is through tokenizing private equity. So uh, our route to market is still emerging as an early stage startup, but we're ultimately aiming to create the free trade or the Robin Hood, as more people are familiar with in the US, for private equity. So companies that have an IPO yet. Awesome. Yeah, I know. So I was really intrigued with Zest because I think it's such an untapped market. Um, and obviously, I'm in the security token space. So kind of makes a lot of sense for us to be here together. Um, And briefly, I'm sure a lot of you know, I'm with Security Token Market, head of media. Um, We're based out of Miami and uh, we are covering all things security token, blockchain. Um, We even dive into uh, the metaverse, Web3, all of that. So um, I kind of oversee the all external projects and everything awesome we're creating. So definitely check us out on all platforms. And if you found this, you obviously found our social medias. So um, I guess we can jump into things. Where should we start? A lot to unpack. Um, (laughs) So I guess our main kind of goal with this, with our series of women in crypto interviews is to just kind of make the space welcoming, you know, spread awareness that there is there are a lot of women in the space trying to do um, amazing things. And um, so Hannah, I guess let's talk about your background a little bit. Um, You are, you do have a doctorate in crowdfunding. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So um, yeah, I've had a bit of a weird career path up to this point. I actually studied mechanical engineering at university. And then I got this opportunity my final year uh, because I didn't want to be an engineer at this point. Like I knew I wanted to do something different. I was inter- interesting, interested in business. And it was uh, a project to think about how to use crowdfunding to develop products. So it was in this like niche space. It was mainly with like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. But in the UK at the time anyway, crowdfunding was like incredibly nascent, like really new. So I had this opportunity to spend three months becoming an expert in this thing that hardly anyone knew about in the UK. Um, and that just kind of snowballed really. So then I did uh, a PhD and alongside my PhD, um, I started running crowdfunding campaigns for friends and then friends of friends and then eventually started my own business to help people run crowdfunding campaigns. Um, and I've raised, I think it's, I, I haven't counted recently, but it's about $10 million for about 70, 70 companies. Um, so it's all about crowdfunding. And then it was very clear, particularly in the UK, but we saw it in the US as well with Republic taking this kind of crypto angle to, to crowdfunding and then ICO started happening and then SDOs are happening a little bit more now. So I started to realize that the industry that I like kind of grew up in and loved was starting to change towards crypto. So that just kind of sparked my interest. I started investing in crypto, getting excited about it. Um, and then I met Ross, who at the time it was like continuous. We re- rebranded to Zest. So I met Ross from Zest, started advising them on their, on the aspects of crowdfunding they were kind of intersecting with. Um, so I was an advisor for a few months and then I was thinking, I, I graduated and I was thinking, okay, what, what's next? Um, and Ross just mentioned, like, we need someone to lead all our marketing and, you know, how to speak to retail investors. So I think this could work and just like a gut feeling that yes. So that's kind of really the point where I'd say I fully started in Web3, which is like the beginning of this year. Um, but it definitely always been something on my mind through my research and also through my investing as well. Amazing. Um, yeah, I know you definitely caught my interest before I had formally met you in Miami just uh, about a month ago. Um, we had the 
honor of meeting in person, but um, definitely caught my interest and um, haven't, you know, that's an awesome background. And I think it's going to bring a lot to the space, especially with so many people now, you know, learning about different ways to raise capital and especially utilizing um, blockchain, crypto, we're doing an STO. I, I think it's the future. So um, yeah, I mean, of awesome. course, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then I guess to share my background, um, I went to school for marketing and strategic communications. I also studied business and engineering as my minor. Oh, wow. So you had like the actual co- combo degree, business and engineering. Yeah. Well, so, so my so major jealous. was my major was um, strategic communications. And then my minors were, I had two minors in business and engineering because I kind of wanted to learn how to code. I don't know why. Um, Oh, that's amazing. I wish I had that full site. (laughs) (laughs) Like occasionally I'll help out on a website here or there. Um, I don't use it too much, but uh, I like having the background and, um, you know, it was, uh, didn't slow down my time in college. So I was like, why not just do it all while I'm there? Um, And then I moved to Miami where I was like kind of following the tech wave and like people, you know, I was, I wanted to be the next, you know, pioneer of crypto. And there wasn't a lot of women that I knew doing it. So I was like, Oh, I'll move down there. I was working in at a startup and uh, then I was working in financial services and I figured I got to get into the, you know, startup space. <laughs> get involved in crypto more. That was my passion, um, or at least the industry. So I found security token market and they were just an amazing group of people, best people I've ever met. Um, and they ended up, I I was, I was not looking for a job. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I was not looking for a job. I was, but anyways, it all worked out and I was like, I have to join this team. So, you know, I'm glad that my passion kind of led me to where I am now. Um, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I have, I, I don't know, I have nothing but amazing things to say about what we're doing over here. So I, I'm kind of biased, but <laughs> you know, well, no, I completely agree, obviously. Like, um, when, yeah, when me and Ross met you, uh, we were just, yeah, we were fangirling and fanboying. Um, oh my gosh. Well, we were, we were so excited to meet you guys. You had traveled <laughs> to Miami. We were like, it was like our first visitor since, uh, we, we haven't had a lot of visitors since COVID and everything. So we were so yeah. excited. Oh, um, yeah, that was great. But it was, you know, so anyways, we're both here. We, I think we both have amazing backgrounds and, um, I mean, pioneering the space. So let's see, what other, where should we kick off? Um, we've see. done the, uh, the bits about ourselves. Yeah, oh, kind of, actually, we've kind of yeah, we've kind of done the first three points that we had mapped out. Uh, we could talk about well. kind of challenges next, maybe. Yeah, let's talk about challenges. Why don't you start us off? I mean, what have you experienced in the space or not experienced? I don't know. I don't want to say that you've faced any challenges or maybe you have, haven't. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, I think um, so. Lots of people say this when they've been in the industry for a year because it feel like, feel, feels like you've met people that have been in it for kind of 30 years, even though it's only been really, truly around for kind of maybe 10 years. But I still feel I'm quite new to the space and I think I have lots of experiences to come, good and bad. Um, but I would say as for being a woman in the space, I think... I'm actually quite used to being in male dominated spaces, having studied mechanical engineering and then was in finance. Like I was kind of used to being in these spaces and there's the same things that come up and that have come up in web three. And I think the main thing, the main difficulties I find is that um, it, it feels a little bit harder to be truly embedded in a community or like naturally embedded in a community, um, especially a community of people that are always talking about, you know, investing in Bitcoin, investing in crypto, like none of my female friends, unfortunately that I know are even that familiar with investing, let alone investing in crypto and talking about web three. So I think there's perhaps a kind of something I have to work extra hard on is being part of a natural knowledge sharing network. And obviously we're we're building one actually, you know, we've set up a telegram chat with, with other women in the space, but you have to, it has to be very intentional. Whereas I have other male friends that are not in my industry that just naturally know about crypto because it's the kind of things they're talking about with their male friends. So I think that's the first thing that I've noticed. Um, As a positive, however, I think one thing I have noticed being a woman in the space is that um, you, you kind of, 
stick close to the women and build really good relationships. So um, at Decipher, I think I mentioned when I was in Miami, um, both me and Ross were kind of, you know, going around networking. Um, I managed to, we all met, I met all the women <laughs> like within the first day yeah. and then they would introduce me to like their colleagues. And as a consequence, I was saying hi to people throughout like the whole conference because I just met them on the first day and you kind of cling to each other because you're like, oh, it's not the woman, it's only 10 of us. Um, and like we were meeting in like the women's toilets, which had no cues. <laughs> um, and it was like, you know, when you're like on a club night and you get in the toilets and all the women like hyping each other up. Yeah. That's exactly what it was like at that conference. So I think that I was able to build really, really quick and close relationships. Um, and I think I find that a lot across the space. So I think the the number of relationships that's easy to build is maybe a bit harder. But in terms of closeness of relationship, I have like lots of really, really good friends now in the space that are encountering the same challenges and have the same agenda and like want, want to get more women in the space. So I think it's, yeah, I hope, I've kind of, I think I kind of summarize the main things that I feel, which is you have to work harder, but the rewards when you do seem to be like very plentiful. Um, I totally agree. And it's interesting you say that it, it's almost like starts earlier, like with obviously what's more um, y- widely utilized now, which is like traditional finance investing with like fiat currencies. Um, and I was working in traditional, the traditional investment space um, based out of like utilizing the US markets. And I totally agree with you. Like, I feel like there's almost more of a bias there that I've faced than in crypto and maybe it's Mm. because there is a lot of excitement in the space now and it's like you said like a lot of people like uh, the women are so welcoming they stick together the the community is super strong and even with you know everybody in the space not just women like I feel like the men are typically fairly welcoming um that I've met in person uh you know I just went to a few art Basel events it was very similar so that's it's definitely um, I feel like a group of younger people that are excited no matter who you are, which is mm. very exciting to me in the space, as opposed yeah. to, I, I really faced a lot of, I faced personally a lot of difficulties with older men in the traditional finance space. And they just didn't take me seriously, didn't give me respect. And that's why I've kind of like fallen in love with this you know, new community. And it's like people who are excited, they don't care who you are, where you're from, what you do. like the whole point of crypto and blockchain is decentralization. Like it doesn't matter where you are, you can interact yeah. from everywhere. So that's kind of yeah. my take on it. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think um, like, it's still very male dominated. Like we know we need more women and like there's work right. to do that, but it feels like there is such an energy and people are so cognizant of wanting to build this new space in a way that we've done better than before um so I think you're absolutely right like trying to uh yeah like penetrate these like quite um old-fashioned spaces particularly finance I definitely found that in London I'm sure you did as well it, it's a, you have to change the industry like you have to go in there and um prove yourself constantly um and there's an element of that still in crypto but I just feel like so many more people are like we want to do things differently and we know that equality and inclusion in all forms needs to be part of that. Um, And actually to give you an example, so today I just tweeted on the Zest account, which is Zest Cap on Twitter. Um, Like we're keen on, I said something like we're keen on um, sharing truly accessible content to make sure that we can welcome more people into the Outground community. Um, And no prompting or anything. I was just like saying, we want want accessible content. What should we write about? Um, And someone commented, um, it was an NFT, but the way that he phrased it made it sound like he was a man. So I've assumed that it was a man. He said, like, we we should um take time to highlight more women in this space. Here are all the women that I follow that I think are great. Um, and so just from that tweet, completely unprompted, there's very wow. active movements to involve more women. So it's great for me. So I've just gone on there, like to save everyone's <laughs> handles. I'm gonna write something about it. Um, and that's from yeah, that's the, that's the kind of energy I feel that's here. Yeah. And I've also not really been met with a lot of negativity, you know, trying to, um, whether it's interviewing women, like, or, you know, doing a public publication, writing on a blog, anything like that. People are really excited. They're like, oh yeah, do an interview. Like, that's awesome. We want to hear from them. We want to hear their experience. And when I told the security token market team, I was talking to you, they were like, oh my gosh, like they they were fangirling over you a little bit. Um, (laughs) you know, (laughs) we were so excited. So um, we've never done a series like this, so here we are. Um, yeah. But no, I think it's just like 
I, you know, it's kind of scary, but I almost feel like it's not from a, to enter the space, it's almost scary, but not from a, a perspective where it's like, oh, I'm not welcome. It's like, where do I start? Like, that yes. was my thing. I was yeah. like, I don't know where to start. Um, yeah. Obviously, I had a lot of great people around me to, you know, start conversations at a very low level and then understand concepts. Um, but I almost feel like that's where we should, um, where I want to improve on helping others get into the spaces, like providing that lower level content um, and just being very informative and sharing knowledge. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's such a good point because I think, um, I mean, obviously every, everyone's experience are going to be different. And uh, as we approach approach these issues and talk about these issues, obviously intersectionality that we have to consider. But I think in general, the main thing that uh, limits inclusion in the space is how we talk about different technologies, how we talk about what we're doing. And I, I'm definitely guilty of this. And lots of people are of using um, specific jargon to... Yeah because it kind of feels fun and part of the community but it means actually people like if you see like not going to make it and you arrive on twitter you're like oh I'm maybe I'm not welcome in the space so I don't get what that is um yeah. so yeah and I think I think that impacts everyone but I think uh, you know traditionally it's shown that women feel like less often feel less brazen to kind of go into a space where they feel less comfortable so I think it can help the gender issue, but it'll, it will make the space more welcoming anyway, if we try and be like more open with how we talk about things um, and make it clear that newbies are very welcome and we're all learning. So I feel like um, kind of an unspoken issue is how people who are not in the space, but have a lot of like prejudice towards it, like mm. specifically with NFTs, they're like, Oh, I can screenshot your, I can screenshot your um, NFT. Like now it's mine. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, you know, there's just a general misunderstanding. So like it, it creates a lot of misunderstandings in the space. And I'm like, NFTs are going to be so widely used. And they're like, I don't want your board eight. Like, how is that going to benefit me in the future? And I was like, well, you know, that's just like the start of mainstream adoption of NFTs. But if you hear me out and hear me out and understand like the technology behind it, maybe you'll be, a, you know, more understanding. So it, it, it's hard because I feel like we're fighting a battle of being like, oh, you know, you know, this space is great and it's going to change the world. But the only thing people understand is that people are selling digital monkeys online for <laughs> millions of dollars, like, and crypto yeah. punks. And, you know, yeah, so that's a really good point as well. Actually, it's like the the use cases that are popularized and kind of on the surface of this space are actually not maybe like the best tool to define the potential of this space. But it's also confusing to me because I feel like we're, I, I can't remember who defined this actually. If I remember, I'll message you so that you can give credit. But uh, I saw a tweet and it was basically talking about um, like when the internet first, you know, <laughs> first happen oh, yeah we, you get the same questions which is like why why would I take all the time to put my bank details online to browse on this website and at that point you know I don't understand how my bank details can be safe I don't understand how I can browse or like how I can find what I need when I can just go 20 minutes up the road to the shop um and this whole ecosystem has emerged, which makes storing bank details e easy. So now we have Stripe, we have PayPal, we have like all these different mm -hmm. tools. We have Klarna, like this whole, all these tools have developed now. Um, and I can't remember, it was obviously but way more eloquently than I'm describing here, but just we're on the cusp of that. And no one's saying that we've got all the solutions now, but this is this is the next generation. This is the next wave. Um, and why you wouldn't be excited about that, even if you don't have all the answers, I don't understand. Because that's what really attracted to, attracted me to the space. It's like, this is a whole new way of doing things. Like, think bigger. It's a whole new way yeah. of connecting with people, creating value, creating change. That, that was enough for me to be like, okay, I want to learn more about this. So I find it really, yeah, really confusing when someone isn't just curious enough to at least know more as opposed to being completely like, well, it's a JPEG. <laughs> right. No, and I so that kind of makes me wonder, or want to ask you the question, like, how did you start learning so we can share with other people, you know, where to begin? Because there's so much. Yeah, for sure. It's such a good question. I wish I could say 
read these articles. Um, but if I'm being oh, honest, yeah. what the thing that's truly accelerated my learning is my team. Like I am surrounded by people in Zest that know way more than me, uh, are also constantly learning themselves and sending me resources. So I think realistically that that has been the biggest driver, but that can definitely be replicated. I think the key thing is start doing, joining a community, join DAOs, join discords, immerse yourself in it is definitely, I feel the best way to learn. As for some specific resources, I mean, Twitter is a godsend. Um, there's one lady that I follow that consistently tweets really, really good content. Let me get her name up quickly. Yeah. Um, and please, um, I was going to say, just message it to me and I'll, I'll include it, uh, in the description of the video. Any, anybody we mention? Yes. Awesome. Let me just see if I can find her. I, I retweeted her recently. Um, and I, I always see her stuff. I just got her name. She's really bad. Sorry, it's going to be a bit long. It's to no, you're good. I feel like yeah. I have the same thing. Like it was like somebody randomly that I read and then you get in the, uh, I go down this like spree of like, <laughs> yeah. they like trying to person, like, retweet <laughs> yeah. and I'm like just reading, reading, reading. Cause I feel like that's how you have to do it kind of. And um, yeah. I have to give credit to Kyle, Kyle Sondland. Yeah. He yeah, always sure. says, he always says, um, he's like, just go on Twitter and read like, cause news publications can't keep up fast enough. You know, anything that they end up getting out and published is already old news. So he's always just like, get on Twitter and read and, you know, immerse yourself, follow people, hashtags, like all of this stuff. So um, yeah, that's my that's biggest cool. recommendation is that, or discord groups. Um, you can yeah, Google. I agree. Just definitely. I think the one of the best things that I and to be honest, like I've been in and out of Twitter for maybe like the last five years. Um, I'm since being in Web three, it's been an absolute must. Like it's the first time in my career, despite you know getting clients through Twitter, having to have an online presence for my crowdfunding, and my research, is been even still. It's truly been the first time that I've it, Twitter has felt like an absolute must. Like in the same way that I have Zoom on my phone to take meetings every day, I have Twitter on my phone to learn every day. Um, yeah. I've just also remember her name is Kinjal Shah. Um, so yeah, oh, just put her in the me. chat there. She's, yeah, she's great. She's like so much content provided for free and she just has a mirror and yeah, like, yeah, I, I follow her. I'm a fan girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, I she's I was going to say, I feel like um, it, with a doctorate in crowdfunding, you had to like, there probably wasn't a lot, you know, created in that space for you to learn from. So was that a yeah. lot of like personal research and development? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, uh, thankfully as, a, as, so I did, I did my first two years of my PhD part-time and then three years full-time. So five years in total. And towards the end of that five years, it was less about creating content and being able to curate and content and then add my spin, which is a relief. Um, but yeah, I'd say that the only people that were really regularly posting high quality crowdfunding content was like one public publication called Crowdfund Insider and then the Cambridge Centre for Alternative Finance, which I later went on to work for, which was amazing because like at the beginning of my PhD, they were the only ones regularly providing like really good research. So yeah, definitely. I'm used to being in a space where like, yeah, the best knowledge is the knowledge that comes via tweets and a random person's newsletter as opposed to, yeah, like tier one publications for sure. I feel like that's almost the most rewarding though. Like, um, I know I always, uh, Herwig, he's quoted in like a few of the creative, like creating the regulations around security tokens. And I just think that's so cool to be like a first adopter to the space and, um, not only be like personally involved, but also like leading the way for others. So um, I, I hope yeah, one day sure. I, I contribute something like that. But anyway. Um, oh, definitely. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you are. Like, I think um, that's what's so, and I definitely feel this energy in the space as well. Like we all feel like we're early, like, and, and that, I feel yeah. like that's rare. Like it's really rare to be this early to something you feel like is big and not that I, this ever thought ever really crosses my mind, but say whatever we think is going to happen doesn't happen just being in this space and learning about all this stuff just everything I'm learning and the people I'm meeting is going to be so applicable regardless of, of what I do which again is why I don't well, get why you want to be curious I also want to add I feel like I'm late like when I first got in the space I felt late like I was like I, I, it's not even worth it like I should just stick with traditional you know what's 
what's currently mainstream. I feel like I'm late. I missed the boat. Everybody there is, you know, already light years ahead of me. And that w- that was really polarizing to me personally. So I almost feel like it's the same oh. for others. Yeah, no. And and I think now there, I've seen so many tweets of the curve or just like, you know, different people saying, oh, this is where we are right now. Like stage yeah. one and we're moving into stage two. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not, obviously I'm not late, but I want other people to know like it, the learning curve is so fast. It's not as fast as you realize. And obviously you're never going to learn everything overnight with anything you do. So why not just start now and take it a day at a time? That's what I did. And uh, yeah, that's such good advice. And yeah, I think um, you're, you're absolutely right. Like I think I'm early now when I was first getting into it, especially I think because I, I mean, I know people that bought Bitcoin in like 2011 and you feel like Uh, coming now, you're like, what is the point? Um, But I think, once you get into the space and you realize how much everyone is learning, like everyone's Googling everything all the time (laughs) and Google doesn't even have all the answers right now. Um, you realize that there's still so much work to be done. And also most significantly is that everyone can have their space in this world. Like you don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be a marketer. You don't have to be a community builder. If you have skills that you've developed outside of web three, web three can use Mm -hmm. them. This is big enough for everyone to have their space for sure. Right. Right. No, and I, you know, it's kind of almost like you said, hard to find reputable info and what to believe, you know, because there's so, there really is truly very little um, in the grand scheme of things. There's very little info on all of this. So um, that's why I think community is valued so much. And there are people who have like really stood out as leaders in the space, which I think is great. But there's, I always remind myself, like, there's always room for more. Cause there, I know there's a lot of big people right now, but that's like just the tip of the iceberg is what we always say. You know, there's so much more that's going to come out of this. So that's why I was like, so excited to do this. I'm like, maybe we'll contribute something to somebody. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm actually, uh, sorry, this might get cut out, but just as a side note, um, yeah. I'm starting a Twitter series. Uh, I think the first one was on Sunday and it's about me because I didn't, <laughs> didn't manage to interview anyone else in time. But we're doing kind of the people behind Web3, like people's full stories as a thread. And because I think one thing, again, this is also intimidating on Twitter. I love it. We all use NFTs as our profile pictures as part of the, the culture. But it also yeah. means that like you go online and you don't see real faces and you don't see real people behind it. And some people want to stay anonymous, but I think a lot of people don't actually want to be anonymous, but they're just kind of subscribing to the culture. So we're, we're doing something mm. that I'd love to interview you for, which is just like the full story. You know, what do you do now? What do you want to do? What do you do outside of work? All that stuff, like the full people behind it. So maybe we can do that too. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I don't want to like, um, what am I trying to say? I just feel like I meet so many people that are like, oh, I'm from my, like, I, I've been in tech for or I shouldn't say tech specifically because that's kind of like very encompassing, but I just feel like I meet so many people and they're like, I've been in this space for so long. And it's like, okay, that's awesome. You know, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I feel like me personally, like I'm still like too little where I'm like, okay, I've only like professionally been involved in this for a year. I I, want to like kind of maybe, you know, I guess going on two years, but um, I still feel like a, a little guy, so a oh, know, baby. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, me too. For like, sure. But um, what was I trying to say? I don't know. Like, I just it's been totally different since I've gotten to Miami and like people's outlook. So I would love to speak on that and like how community is so it changes your perspective on everything. Like coming back to Colorado, it's so different. Um very very like anti all of this um it's all corrupt and it's all a ponzi scheme but yeah that's interesting isn't it it's useful though it is useful to hear that perspective because if we do want to bring people into the space we have to recognize like what their thoughts and feelings are right now um definitely yeah so that's good I mean the difference between Miami and London you know we're only in Miami for a week and then we came back to London and it was like oh <laughs> I, have, I don't know anything about the London community like it, it, you said it's kind of the same way as far as being or the same way as other places where it's kind of like oh more traditional we're kind of rejecting this is that right yeah I think and maybe 
this is the nature of Web3, but it's very it's a very decentralized like ecosystem at the moment. You have like a few pockets of people doing different work, but it's not really united. I mean, I think COVID has had, you know, I think to to do with that because normally you could have these big events and kind of get all those groups together. So that's probably had a big impact. But yeah, like just kind of, for example, going on Eventbrite or like going on LinkedIn and just trying to find events happening on Web3. It's like, it, there's not a huge amount. Um, and I think one thing we're big, big on fintech in general in London, obviously financial services is one of our biggest exports. There's a lot going on in London within finance and financial innovation. Um, but we haven't quite, there's not, quite enough people like thinking about it in a web three context, thinking about DeFi. So, um, yeah, it definitely, I mean, in Miami, you have Bitcoin ATMs and I was like, what? This is amazing. Like it, that was just like, it's just like a completely different world, honestly. But we, you know, I think as long as there are people that, that, you know, businesses popping up, which they are all the time, I think that will change. And I think London is a bit crazy with COVID right now, but when it gets safer, hopefully we can start to like bring these groups together. So yeah, a long way to go, but lots of potential, I think. Yes. I will be on the first plane over there if there's ever a conference and it's safe to, yeah, you know, safe sure. to travel. I will, I will have, I will represent security token market there. Um, yeah. Amazing. I have to show you around. Yes. We we haven't talked about like how to maybe how we can bring more women into the space. Um, so maybe we could talk about that. Yeah. How would I, I think that goes back to my point where it's like, you're not late right now. Um, there's still, it's worthwhile. You know, that's what I felt like. I felt like it wasn't worthwhile for me to learn, um, which is totally not true. And to kind of, like you said, maybe be more, uh, welcoming in my jargon and, you know, create lower level content for security token market. Um, that, that's like me personally, what I can physically do, because obviously I don't have control over other things, but I think that's one thing that I can personally do. I think you're doing an amazing job with possessed Twitter admin reveal. Um, <laughs> Right, the, the I'm usually doing the NFT. on Sunday. I'm doing like a whole Twitter thread about myself, and anyone that reads it is going to be like, "If she runs the Zest community, does that mean she's writing these tweets?" <laughs> and I am. We can cut this out. No, <laughs> I, I've been in. I've been a social media manager for so long. It's part of what I do now at Security Token Market. Um, I will give Jonah Jonah Shulman this credit. He's Twitter master. So good. I don't even want to you know, interact on his turf because he's too good at it. But I feel like that's, I, I've been there. You, you're liking your posts, you're retweeting them. I get it. Um, so tr I don't think you should be ashamed at all. Um, but um, no, I yeah. can't wait Well, to yeah, sorry. To go back to, um, yeah, like how to bring people in. Like, it's like not more to add than what you said. Like, I think um, it's definitely an active role that you have to have. And I don't think any, you know, any woman needs to be responsible for that. But personally, I'm keen to actively make that effort to bring women in, introduce them to other women, introduce them to great people I know in the space. And my expectation is that the people that I introduce them will have the same mindset as you, which is you're not late. Everyone has a space here. We're all learning. No shame. Ask, you, ask the questions you think are stupid. Um, and yeah, yeah, and I think, it's and and I think you can facilitate that very effectively online. I think you can facilitate it probably better in like group chats and discords, um, and then of course in real life as well, like having these conversations and making it being approach approachable and welcoming in person as well. So yeah, and I think that's really it's kind of really a grassroots movement at the moment. Like I think that there are great organisations um, globally that are working to build inclusivity, but I think really where it starts is just as an individual recognizing how you can yeah. be more inclusive. No, I think, like you said, um, I think the beauty of it is almost like how we want everything to be so decentralized. And it's like how I, you know, you and Ross, um, we all met online. And then when time came, we were able to meet in person. So even if you're not in the hotspot, if you're not in Miami, you don't have to be. Um, that's literally the beauty of what we're trying to create is uh, you can do it from anywhere at any time, 24-7. Uh, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. Get a Twitter, hop on, find some hashtags and, uh, yeah, build your group. That's what, that's what I would recommend, I guess, for women, but maybe I can, maybe I should do a Twitter thread or something like, you know, these are the people I started off following. This is where I began. This is, is I, I kind of like your idea of creating a thread of yourself. Like 
I think that's very interesting to people. I think you're discounting yourself if you think it's not. Um, I, uh, I can't wait to I'm read it. I'm myself for not interviewing someone else. Um, but we're doing it, we'll do it like every couple of weeks. So I'll get, yeah, I'll get other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, I mean, let me know if you need help. I know... And I, there's so many people that I could recommend to you. I mean, I'm sure you know as well. Um, I feel like everybody I meet is so I, interesting, but. Yeah, definitely. I still feel like I'm, well, I mean, it will, I think I'll be in this phase for a long time, but um, I felt like with crowdfunding, I started with trying to find, connect with everyone in the space, which took maybe three years. And then at that point, like, I felt like I know the important people, of course I'm meeting other people, but I feel like I've got the, the important people in my phone book now um yeah nowhere near that with web3 like the kind of people that i can rely on like i have uh, i'm so glad to be building like a really gr- big network um but yeah it's exciting to still be in that space where you're like meeting well, you're- people oh you're working on this i've heard about this like ravencoin for example i met the founder of ravencoin on twitter the oh, other day Sean? um yes Sean and Black. it was yeah, it was a case of like, oh yeah, you've talked about Raven. I've heard about Raven Point, and now I finally met you. Like that's it's it's really nice. And I still, I, I'm sure everyone feels like that at the moment. Like it's just so much excitement yeah. in the space, which is like really infectious. I think that's the cool thing about it, though, is you can literally run into like the cre- like the creator of Raven Point is there like replying to tweets all day, and you wouldn't know yeah. unless you clicked on his profile, and it was like Tron Black. Like shout out Tron um, and the Raven Coin community. They're so they have an amazing community. They're so strong. Like. I feel like that's the beauty of it. You're kind of tapping into the Algorand community right now. Um, yeah, for and- sure. That's that's the thing as well. Like the, you've got, obviously you've got DAOs, you've got coins that go with DAOs, you've got NFTs that go with DAOs, then you've got level one protocols, level two protocols. There's just like, and each, each technology in whatever form has its own community around it. And then you have wider communities of, you know, like the Ethereum community or the NFT community or the DAO community. And then you have Web3 as a whole. So like you can start in just one of these small places, get all the information you need and then kind of gradually grow. Yeah. And I I do want to, like somebody asked me last night, they were like, oh, I would, I would be interested in crypto, but I need a lot of money to get into the space. And I was like, no, you don't, you could enter with $5, you know? You don't 100%. need that. Just even if you get on there, try it out at you know five dollars and research on Twitter. Bring it into you know your trading or whatever you want to do. Like by all means, you know I think we should normalize that. Not everybody is making millions of dollars overnight. Like it's it's not that. It's not a scheme. It's all this you know craziness that gets caught by the mainstream media and so-and-so sent somebody a billion dollars and now it's gone and it's yeah you know yeah it's definitely. like it's all safe um yeah yeah you're you're 100 right and i think um yeah i guess i think especially with bitcoin there's this feeling like i'm way too late for that now yeah. um yeah. obviously no investment advice but i think when it comes to investing in general and i i've talked a lot about how to get more women in investing and this applies to anyone that's interested in investing like just start small like crypto is a, a risky asset so I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily suggest starting with crypto but definitely if you want to learn about crypto investing in a coin or a project that you find interesting investing in a DAO you can invest in these projects for, like literally with like ten dollars obviously it depends what chain you're on you're gonna have to pay gas fees if it's on ethereum and um, but you absolutely do not need to be wealthy like definitely not right um yeah, that's that's a really good point. That's a really poor misconception for sure that we should. And I think uh, your point about DAOs is great. I mean, we just saw that. I, I like how it it was really very widely accepted, and I think it got a lot of people's attention. Was Constitution DAO? Um, I mean, that was like united our office for like three days. Um, we had people arguing. You know, it was like the best banter ever. Like, we're gonna buy the the constitution and then it's like it it just snowballs into this community and then you have discord groups with thousands of people you have twitter buzzing like that's the beauty of it is it's like you can it's it's uniting people and it's all for you know at least that one was for a really i think amazing they had an amazing goal and i think they were trying to really do something revolutionary it's kind of a shame how it panned out i won't go into that we're still a little (laughs) heartbroken but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely amazing. And there's uh I've recently joined ElfDAO, which is a uh, uh DAO to buy gifts for 
children from low income backgrounds. And it's these kind of DAOs. These, these are the ones I like joining because like I can describe, I described it to my mom that doesn't, doesn't know anything about crypto. And yeah. I can tell her like what this organization does. And she's like, okay, well, that makes sense. I, I can see that that's important. Um, so yeah, the con- I think the Constitution DAO was the first one that I feel like really broke. I don't know. It's really hard because we're all in echo chambers. <laughs> but yeah. I feel like that really broke into, um, just just showed the the potential in a in a use case that everyone could understand. Um, yeah. You know, I contributed to Constitution DAO. I'm not even <laughs> I'm not even American. So I think. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's these kind of projects that like are really accelerating change. Um, and yeah, I love Constitution Charter. It was great. But I think the key there was it was very simple. It's like, there's this copy of the institution. We're going to buy it and it's going to be owned by the people. Same with ElfDAO. It's like, we're going to buy presents for low-income children. I think- I saw you that's, tweet that's about that. Bit. And um, I was like, wow, this is actually amazing because it kind of sheds a nice light on like a community that people have a bad rap on, you know? oh, this is a very greedy and, you know, all this like kind of uh, negative, if you're not in the community, like it has a negative connotation. So I think it's great. Like this one's buying gifts for low income children. Like that's very much a cause that a lot of people could get behind. So um, definitely need more of those types of um, DAOs, but. Yeah, definitely. I I tweeted the other day, um, would men go to therapy if they could pay an ETH? And someone messaged me and was like, should we start a therapy DAO where we give men free therapy? <laughs> um, and I was like, hey, I don't know, but I am intrigued. <laughs> so I got a call with him like in early January to discuss it. Um, and I think that I think that's what's so fun as well. Like, wow. Just like the idea that that the, the dumbest tweets, it's always the dumbest tweets that do really well as well. <laughs> I know, right? Every time I question myself, I'm like, no, you know what? Just send it. Yeah, yeah. It's always the ones where you're like, oh, this isn't that good. And then it goes far and you're like, okay. Um, you had some good yeah. replies to that. That was a hilarious thread. Yeah, there, there were so many really good ones. Um, uh, so yeah, so and and that just emerges from someone being like, actually, this could be quite important. Let's make a DAO because we know how to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's exciting. 